Hello hens and robins. I've chosen you a very special story this week because our topic is all about foxes and I was trying to think of a story that I might have about foxes and it made me remember that I had this story from when I was a little girl. So it's a very, very old book. It's an old story book, but I thought it would be really nice to share it with you today. It's called The Little Wood Duck and I thought it's a good story for lots of reasons. One, because we're learning about foxes and there's a fox in the story. Uh, two, because it's about a duck and she lays six eggs and we're thinking about the number six this week. Three, I realised it's got the word wood and we're learning about that short double O sound this week. <clears throat> um, and I can't remember what the other reason was, I think probably because it's one of my favourite stories from when I was a little girl. My mummy used to read it to me. Um, oh yes, the other thing is because it's by Brian Wildsmith, that was it. And I just love his pictures. I love the illustrations in this book. So I'm hoping that you will really like them too. So really have a look at the pictures while I'm reading the story. And then after I finish the story, I think maybe we could have a think about drawing some of the pictures ourselves okay so the little wood duck so it's about a duck and she lives on a lake in Canada so it's not um, a lake in this country it's a lake in Canada so maybe you could find out after I finish reading the story where Canada is on the map of the world and have a look at and see which animals are the same which animals we have here uh, in Canada and here and which animals we don't in this story there's a bear, so we don't very often see bears, do we, here, when we go for walks in the woods. Once upon a time, in an old tree beside a lake, a mother wood duck built her nest, and in that nest she laid six eggs. Come and see, quacked the duck. I'm so excited. I've laid such a lot of eggs. I have never laid so many before. The wood duck's friends came hurrying to see the eggs. They were nearly as excited as the mother duck herself. Soon I shall have six handsome ducklings, boasted the wood duck, and she settled her feathers over the eggs to keep them warm. Can you see the animals? Day after day, the wood duck sat patiently on her eggs, but she couldn't resist taking a peek and then, now and then, to see if one of them had hatched. At last the little ducklings broke out of their eggs and were soon chasing each other around the tree. Can you see the ducks? One, two, three, four, five, six. The wood duck watched over them with pride. She longed for them to be big enough to take their first swim in the lake. Then one warm clear day the mother duck called the children to her and took them down to the water's edge. One, two, three, four, five. Can you see the other one? Six, right at the back. Without a moment's hesitation, the ducklings jumped into the water and swam in a nice straight line and out of the reeds, all except one. The youngest duckling swam all by himself, round and round in circles. The other duckling came to him to play with him in the reeds. But the youngest wood duck just went on swimming round and round. So the, his brothers and sisters are playing over here, but he's just swimming in circles. Can you see him? Every day the ducklings followed their mother to the water and practiced their swimming. But the youngest duckling always swam by himself and he swam in circles. 
He just doesn't want to swim with us, complained the five brothers and sisters. Come here at once, the mother duck cried angrily. It is very silly to keep swimming around and around like that. But I can't do it any other way, wailed the youngest duck. That is nonsense, said mother duck. But no matter what his mother said, the youngest duckling went on swimming in circles. His mother became angry. His brothers and sisters poked fun at him and the little wood duck felt very unhappy. I do try, he said to himself, but I just can't swim any other way. The other animals began to tease him. Silly old roundabout, said the moose. I bet you can't even see straight, growled the bear. They weren't very kind, were they? The other animals who were watching from the bank laughed unkindly. The little wood duck grew more and more unhappy. Then one day, an owl who was flying past heard the teasing and swooped down to see what was going on. He called the duckling out of the water and asked him to tell him his troubles. While the little wood duck explained about his swimming, the owl looked over him carefully. Why, young fellow, cried the owl, you have one foot larger than the other. That is why you go round and round. But never mind, there is nothing wrong with swimming in circles. Take no notice of those silly animals. And the owl scolded the other animals for being so unkind. About a week later, a hungry fox came to the lakeside and stood waiting for the ducklings to come ashore. Can you see he's licking his lips, waiting for a nice duckling snack. But the five brothers and sisters hid amongst the reeds, shaking in fright. Only the youngest wood duck kept on swimming. Round and round he went while the fox settled down to watch and wait. But all at once the fox felt rather strange. He had watched the duckling swimming round and round for so long he began to feel dizzy. He felt that not only the duckling was going round and round, but the grass and the trees and the sky and the lake as well were going round and round. Oh dear, gasped the fox, and he fell flat on his back. He was too giddy even to sit. All at once the little ducklings raced to the shore and then home to their mother. One, two, three, four, five, six. Quick. They all tried at once to tell her the story, except for the youngest duckling who stood modestly by, but his mother was proud of him and all his brothers and sisters crowded around to cheer. We will never tease you again, they said, and they never did, for the little wood duck was the hero now and everybody admitted, admired his wonderful circles and the tremendous speed of his swimming. So it has a happy ending. The little duck is the hero right at the end. And the fox is kind of the baddie, isn't he? You t t tend to find that in stories that the fox tends to be the baddie. But after all, the fox, he just wants to eat, doesn't he? Like all the other animals. So he has to find food from somewhere. Now, looking at this book, it made me think that maybe you might like to have a go at doing some beautiful drawings like Brian Wildsmith. 
So I had a go, I had a look through and I chose the owl. I quite like the picture of the owl. So I had a go at drawing an owl. And I think what I like about Brian Wildsmith's pictures, there's my attempt, is the different patterns. So what I tried to do was I coloured the eyes in first and then I drew some lines around the eyes. I tried to use a stick to scratch into my crayon and that didn't work. So then I used uh, the end of the crayon instead. And then for his body, I used the side of the crayon and did some shading. So have a go at trying some different textures. For his wings, I just did lots and lots of little semicircle shapes like this and then drew little circles inside. Okay, so have fun. Um, draw a fox if you'd like to, because we're learning about foxes this week, or an owl, or a duck, or any animal that you can think of, it doesn't matter. And then doing this reminded me of something else that I used to do in school in the 1970s. Um, and that was crayoning. This is something that the teachers used to do with us when I was at school. So crayon, so use your crayon to crayon first. So I use the orange and the green. Press on really hard. And then with your black crayon, you crayon on top. And then this is the magical part with a pencil. So you've got the, I had orange and green underneath. I've gone on top with black, press on really, really hard. And then with your pencil, you can scratch into can you see? You can scratch into the crayon, into the wax, and a little magical picture comes. So you get the colour from underneath the black. So you could have a go at that. If you get a rainy day and you want to try something different, you could have a go at that. And that's something that Mrs Main did when I was at school when I was your age. <laughs> okay, have a lovely week, and I hope to see you very soon with another story. Bye.